Hello, everybody. Are you interested in learning about AI security in 2025 and potentially starting a career in this exciting new field within cybersecurity? Then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to give you a step by step roadmap for how you can start learning AI security and give you access to like completely free resources, which will give you like a massive advantage over other people. So let's get started. If you're new here, my name is Tamuruj Lal. I am a cybersecurity professional with over 20 years experience. In cybersecurity, I have published a best-selling book on AI security and also several best-selling courses on the same topic on platforms like Udemy. So I do want to know a little bit about AI security. So let's get started. A step-by-step -step plan to learn AI security in 2025. And first of all, let's answer this question, why? Like, why would you want to learn about AI security in 2025? Well, first of all, uh, AI, AI is going to be everywhere in 2025 and beyond. Whether you like the, the fact you think over AI is overrated or not, it does not matter. AI is going to be everywhere. It is one of the hottest fields, which is uh, like growing within the tech industry. As you can see here, Gartner predicts that 80% of companies, it will have deployed AI or Gen AI in one form and another by 2026. Whether it's APIs, whether it's applications, AI will be there within your company in the coming years, right? So you can either choose to ignore it and get left behind or future proof yourself by learning about this. And this is also very critical if you're a cybersecurity professional. So I hope this shows to you the importance of learning a little bit about AI. Uh, one thing before we go, move ahead, do like and subscribe to this channel and share this video if you find it useful. So the first step, if you want to start learning AI security, in 2025, the very first step is to learn about a little bit about machine learning. A lot of people, what the mistake they make is they jump directly into learning about how to secure AI without getting their foundations right. This is like learning about network security and you don't even know what the OSI reference model is. You know, <laughs> Like a simple, the very basics you haven't gotten right and you want to jump into security, do not make this mistake. Something which I see repeated again and again. Learn about machine learning. Machine learning is the engine that drives AI and it is also where most of the attacks happen. So it's very important for you to learn a little bit about machine learning, how it works, what are the basic concepts. If you want to like basically understand in a very, very high level, this is how a normal program works, right? A normal application. You have an application, you give it an input, there is an algorithm there and it gives you an output. This is remains the same for the last like 40 years, whether it's like a web application, whether it's like a desktop application, it's a mobile app, it's a microservices architecture, it's taking some input, doing something with it and giving you an output. Now with AI, it's slightly different with machine learning. With machine learning, you give it the input and the output also, like you tell it, okay, this is the input, this is the output and the machine, the AI model is about to learn it learns about this, right? You, you feed it maybe pictures of cats and dogs. It's going to learn. So you give it an input, a picture, and you tell it the output also. This is a dog. It's going to learn and learn and create a model which will, which will help it make future predictions. This is like the biggest difference between, say, a normal application here and a machine learning algorithm. And it's very, very important for you to understand. like uh, Because this is, again, where the risks are where the challenges are when it comes to machine learning. This is a very basic difference. And this is how the engine of machine learning works. What are the topics you should learn about? At a very basic level, you should learn about supervised and unsupervised learning, neural networks, like reinforcement learning, feature engineering, how models are evaluated and validated. Do you need to do a deep dive? No, you can make do with just the basic concepts, but you should understand these. If you, if the only thing you know about AI is chat GPT, uh, you're going to have a serious problem. I hate to tell you this, AI is not just chat GPT or generative AI. It is much, much more than that, right? Things like feature engineering, things like reinforcement learning, at least get the fundamental understanding of what these concepts are, because they will help you further down the road when you have to do threat modeling, when you have to understand how these uh, like risks are being introduced within these machine learning algorithms. So that was from the machine learning. Now you have gotten an understanding of machine learning, right? If you followed step one, step two is you understand biases in AI algorithms. Now AI can AI can be biased in its decision making. The whole point of AI is you give it an input and output, it understands, and then the future it can make predictions. Now these predictions can actually be biased. If you won't believe, if you look at this picture. Uh, on the left guy, this uh, Dylan guy, no, he had like, if you look up, he had prior offenses, armed robberies, 
attempted armed robbery, so much more. He was categorized as a low risk. And on the white guy, this poor person, Bernard, he had just like very small minor crimes, but he was categorized as the highest risk. Then why? Because the AI model was fed incorrect data and it started making judgments and discriminating against people based on the skin color. And this is something unique to AI. This does not happen in normal applications because AI makes predictions. You have to make sure that those predictions are correct and they are not biased. AI has to be transparent in how it makes its decisions. It's very, very important to understand this because later attacks like data poisoning, model poisoning, this is what they try to do. They try to interfere with the decision making of an AI model. So understand how biases are, how they work and how they get introduced. So what are the topics you should cover here? A very basic at the high level syllabus, you know, like types of biases that are there, sampling bias. It is like a measurement bias, algorithmic bias. What are the ethical implications? What happens if an AI is supposing an AI is in the medical field, right? It's giving, it's declining insurance claims based on the, based on where you live, right? Or it's giving like strict sentences to people who are a particular skin color, or maybe it's rejecting job applicants based on their gender, based on their skin color. It's very, very dangerous and it can lead to a massive problems for your companies down the road. So, and what are the techniques for mitigating these type of biases, right? Like resampling, reweighing, adversarial training. If these concepts are completely alien to you, no issue at all. You can, they are like a million videos and courses available free for free on the internet, which can teach you these things. Again, you do not need to do a PhD on this. You do not need to do like a, get down into the statistical models and how those calculations are happening. No, a basic high level knowledge of this will take you very, very far. But you do need to understand what these concepts are because the new attacks which happen, they actually seek to exploit and make the models biased against a particular thing. Okay, so now, now you have gotten an understanding of machine learning, which was step one. Number two was biases. Now let's go on to three, learning about the AI specific attacks. Just to give you a brief background, I started my career in 2002, which, which gives you an idea of how old I am, right? But at that time, application security was becoming more and more popular. Why? Because we were seeing these new type of attacks, SQL injections, cross-site scripting, and we were completely, like a lot of people were completely confused about these new type of attacks which are happening because we used to think about attacks happening at the network layer. Application security started happening at the at a new layer, the level seven the application layer, and we were simply not ready. This is the same thing which is happening now. So now we have the application layer protected with things like web application firewalls, you know, source code review. But now we are adding another layer on top of that, which is AI, machine learning algorithms. And that's why new types of attacks are happening, which is leaving people confused, like what's happening? What are these sort of attacks? That's why it's so important for you to understand about AI specific attacks. AI has a life cycle, right? Like if you choose a model, you train that model, you test that model, you optimize that AI model, deploy it and then maintenance it. And attacks can happen at any layer, right? You can poison the model, you can poison the data. You can do a breach of the underlying infrastructure, which is not a new attack, right? You can poison the supply chain of a model. You can do inference attacks, which is where you are extracting how the model is working or what the data is there. And you're understanding the uh, basically the data which is used to train the model. This can become a major issue if you are in a sensitive field like banking or maybe the medical field where you can actually try to trick it into telling you what sort of data was used to train this model, what sort of logic it is using to reach a particular decision. And once you have this information, you can actually use it to bypass the model, right? If you're an attacker or if you're somebody who wants to steal proprietary information about a particular model. That's why it's so important to understand uh, these sort of attacks. Now you might be thinking, okay, these are the topics which are there, like adversarial examples are there, data poisoning, model inversion, membership inference attacks. And these are attacks you should have a good knowledge about, good understanding about, if you want to understand AI security, because you're gonna have to put in security controls, which we'll see later to protect against these sort of attacks. Now you might be thinking, okay, how the heck do I understand? Like, where do I go to find out about these attacks? Well, the good news is one of the best resources there is MITRE ATLAS. The ATLAS is adversarial, uh, I completely forgot the abbreviation, my, my apologies, but yeah, it is a free knowledge base of AI attacks. It is one of the best resources, completely free, 
available on the internet. I'll put the link in the comments section so you can take a look at it. But it literally shows you all the attacks which are there at every level of the machine learning life cycle, right? And it shows you how these attacks happen. And even better, it gives you case studies of actual incidents that have happened. So if you want to understand the machine learning attacks, AI attacks, this is the resource to go to. Like I said, completely free. If you are interested in making a career in AI security, like AI penetration testing or AI like uh, control fine tuning, this resource is invaluable for you. Like just giving an example, if you go to the MITRE Atlas, like poisoning training data, right? This is a unique attack where the data which is used to train the AI, you can actually poison it. And if you want to understand how this attack happens or actual case studies, like you can see here, the case studies, it shows the first one, virus total. If you click on it, it'll actually show you how this attack happened, when did it happen, what were the issues, what were the procedure which the attackers used to compromise it. You can get a very, very good knowledge about these sort of attacks. So this is the easily the best resource I would recommend because it not only shows you how these attacks happen, it also shows you like what actual case studies which have happened to give you a much better idea. So this was understanding uh, AI specific attacks. Now, uh, learning about AI risk management. Now let's, now we've understood the risks which are there, the biases, the specific attacks that are there. Now we want to start like implementing AI security. First thing you want to understand is AI security does not exist in a vacuum. You don't suddenly just start implementing AI security. You need to have a proper risk management framework around it because AI risks are different and you need to have a proper structure, a proper uh, like framework around it. So like, like this shows, you need to have an AI policy, an AI committee who gives the go or no go decisions for sensitive or critical AI risk. You can't just implement security controls and think that, yeah, this is my job is done. No, you need to have an AI policy which, which tells the company what are the key things they have to think about when they are implementing AI. You need to have an AI committee consisting of people from legal, from risk, from cyber security, from operational risk, from audit, who will make the go no go decisions, who will track AI risks. And you need to have an AI risk management framework. And then from there, you need to think about AI security controls and the AI risks which are there. So things like AI governance frameworks, best practices, how AI risks are evaluated, what are the laws like the EU AI Act, right? And incident response and recovery plans for AI systems. And if you're thinking, okay, where do I start learning? Again, an excellent resource, which is completely freely available. It is the AI risk management framework from NIST. NIST, if you've been working in cybersecurity for any amount of years, you know how important NIST is, right? Uh, they said, uh, they created the industry benchmark with the cybersecurity framework, the CSF, which they call, and it has become the benchmark for millions of companies across the globe. And same thing is going to happen with this, the AI risk management framework which they have released. It's completely tech agnostic, vendor agnostic, and it shows you what are the things you have to think about when you're implementing AI risk. They also give you like a website, a free NIST AI risk management playbook, so you can actually go. So they have like around four core principles, govern, map, measure, manage, and you can go down to the playbook and it actually shows you what are the things you have to do for govern, for map, for measure, for manage. Check it out and get a good understanding about AI risk management and how you have to implement it. And another resource which I would highly recommend is the Generative AI Security Scoping Matrix. This is from AWS. Uh, one disclaimer, I work in AWS, so maybe I don't want you to think I'm biased, but I honestly believe this is one of the best like resources available because what it does is it, it talks to you specifically about Gen AI and the types of use cases that are there in Gen AI. So you could be using like a public app like ChatGPT or you could be training your own model or you could be self-training it based on your own data, you know, completely from scratch. And what are the five dimensions you have to think about? Governance, legal, risk, controls, resilience. It's like a three-part blog which is there for freely available from AWS. I would, I will highly recommend it to you if you are serious about learning about JNI security specifically because there are so many different models. When people think about JNI, I don't know why the only thing they think about is ChatGPT for some reason. When that is not the case, JNI covers multiple models, multiple use cases, and you have to understand all of them. Okay, like, so this is how it looks like. You can see these are the, uh, from the generative AI security scoping metrics, these are the types of 
controls that they recommend like putting a CASB or putting like a, a WAF or a DLP or put, uh, protecting the model again depending on the type of JNEI model you are using. So this is very very highly recommended you should combine it with something like uh, the Atlas framework to get a holistic view of JNEI security risks. Okay so now you've learned about AI risk management step 5 is learning about AI security controls, right? Implementing AI security and understanding the AI security controls that are already there. And this is, like I said, this is where the people make the mistake. They jump directly here. Now you understand why I walked you through a proper step-by-step -step process because it's so important to get the foundations right. Because you would not understand what data poisoning is or what the model evasion is if you haven't understood the basics first. But these are the sort of controls you want to think about now. Putting in AI security controls, you can use the MITRE Atlas framework because they talk about implementing the specific security controls that are there to protect against these sort of attacks. You want to learn about first these topics like data protection, the secure model training, like testing and validation and monitoring and auditing AI systems. And what are the resources that are there? Like, like I said, you can look at MITRE Atlas framework. The OWASP top 10 for LLM applications has been updated. It, it It's quite a good resource. It shows you all the sort of controls that should be there for Gen AI applications. Like I said, the MITRE Atlas framework is also awesome and it goes into AI. It doesn't just cover Gen AI, it covers all sorts of AI attacks. Both of these resources are absolutely amazing. I would recommend you combine it with a framework like the AWS one or the NIST one to get a holistic view of all the sorts of attacks that are there. So this, this is was the like the five step process I would highly recommend for you if you're serious about learning about AI security in 2025. If this was useful to you, do like and subscribe to this channel. If you still want to deep dive, then I have multiple courses available on Udemy. Check those out. I don't want to promote any of my courses, but I'm just showing if you want to further deep dive into any particular topic, then I have other resources also. I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.